Today we're going to look at something called telephone numbers. We'll explore what they are, calculate the first couple of telephone numbers, and then build the generating function. One of my favorite things that will help us get a closed form for these functions. So there's a lot of cool tricks that we'll see along the way. So what is a telephone number? Well, we'll define the nth telephone number to be the number of pairwise connections that can be made between n people. So let's look at a condition that's allowed and then one that's not allowed. So here we've got five people and these two are connected and these two are connected. Notice this person up here is not connected to anyone, that's allowed. Okay, now moving on to this, here we've got five people again. These two are connected, but then this person right here is connected to two people, that is not allowed. Each individual can be connected to zero people or one person. That's what we mean by these pairwise connections. Now we can like draw some nice pictures in order to find the first couple of telephone numbers. So for instance, if n equals zero, well there are no people, and we would take that to be like the empty connection space. And so we would say the zeroth telephone number was one. Now if we go to n equals one, well the first telephone number is also one. There are no connections that can be made between those people. Again, it's kind of like an empty connection. Now if we move on to n equals two, we've got that empty connection where no one is connected, but then we could also connect the two people that are in the situation. Moving to n equals three, there are four total types of connections, the empty connection and then three, kind of depending on who you leave out. And then finally, the last one that we'll look at specifically is n equals four, and there are 10 possibilities here. And that comes from no one being connected. There are six ways that you can connect two people, and then there are three ways you can connect two pairs of two people. Okay, so now let's get to building our generating function. And building our generating function will start with a recursion, which we'll develop using standard counting techniques. So recall that t of n is the number of pairwise connections between n people. I'm using t of n here to be our telephone number. And then I've got a little bit of a picture of what's going on here. So there's person n and then we've got everyone else. So obviously we can break this into a couple of cases. And maybe the first case is the connections where person N is disconnected. Okay, so well if person N is disconnected then we've got N minus one people to connect. But we know exactly how to connect N minus one people. We do that with T N minus one. Okay, but then we're gonna look at the complement of that situation. And so those will be the connections where person N is connected. Okay, so let's go down to our picture here. So we've got person N, and we're gonna connect them to one of the other people in this scenario. But how many choices do we have to connect them to someone else? Well, exactly n minus one, because there are n minus one people left over. So I'll just make this connection right here, and I'll point out that there are n minus one possible ways to make this connection. You know, here, or here, or here, or so on and so forth. Okay, but then after we've done that, we're left with all of these people left over, and there are exactly n minus two people here. That's because we're using person n and whoever we're connecting them to. Okay, we can count the number of connections between n minus two people. Well, that's gonna be exactly t of n minus two, but then we need to multiply that by this first choice, this n minus one possible ways to connect person n, and that builds the rest of this recursion. So this choice right here is n minus one times t of n minus two. And there's our recursion. So now let's take that and start to build our generating function. 
So we just developed the following recursion for our telephone numbers, but now we can almost redefine these numbers in terms of this recursion, where we have seeds, t of zero equals t of one equals one. And now we're gonna build an exponential generating function. So there are two main types of generating function, ordinary generating functions and exponential generating functions. And anytime you've got like a multiplication by the index out here, you know, often at least, the exponential generating function is the way to go. Okay, so what do I mean by an exponential generating function? Well, I'm gonna set t of x equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of t of n, so that's our nth telephone number, over n factorial times x to the n. So it looks like maybe the exponential function, but it still has part of the sequence in there, maybe making us think that, yes, it is an exponential generating function. Okay, so let's get to it. Well, we can only apply this recursion if n is bigger than or equal to two because the seeds take care of the first two cases. So that's exactly the first thing that I'll do is pull out the first two terms. The n equals zero term, which is one, because we have t of zero over zero factorial x to the zero. Those are all one. And then we'll have x for the second term because we have t of one over one factorial x to the one. And then after that, we'll have the sum. Now n is gonna go from two to infinity because we took out the first two terms of t of n over n factorial times x to the n. But now we'll take this t of n term and we'll replace it with, well, what we know from the recursion. So in this case, it's t of n minus one plus n minus one times t of n minus two. So that's the replacement that will really like fuel the first couple steps of our calculation. Okay, so let's rewrite this. We'll have one plus x, those are gonna come down, and then we'll have the sum as n goes from two to infinity. I'm actually gonna split this sum into two pieces. Now that's obviously only allowed if we're in the region where this absolutely converges. But the thing with these generating functions is, is that we're not really interested in convergence. These are so-called formal power series. Okay, so anyway, our first term will be t n minus one. That's over n factorial, and then we have x to the n. Okay, nice. And then our second term, well, it's the sum as n goes from two to infinity again, and we'll have n minus one times t of n minus two. That's still over n factorial, and it's x to the n. And now we'll re-index these so that we get a t of n here instead of a t of n minus one or a t of n minus two. So in this case, we need to re-index by replacing all of the n's with n plus ones. That's because, well, n minus one plus one is clearly equal to n. And then over here, we'll take all of the n's and replace them with n plus two, kind of for the symmetric reason. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have one plus x, plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity. That's because if n plus one is equal to two, n is equal to one. And then we'll have t of n over n plus one factorial. But I'm gonna write that n plus one factorial as n plus one times n factorial, kind of looking ahead. And then I've got x to the n plus one. So I've got something like that. And then what do we have for this next term? So I'll have the sum as n goes from two up to infinity. Sorry, that should be zero up to infinity because of our change of index. And then this n minus one will become an n plus one. And then we'll be left with t of n over n plus two factorial, and then x to the n plus two. Okay. So now where could we possibly go from here? So I'm gonna take this x term and recognize that it could be the zeroth term of this series. So I'll maybe seem like I'm getting rid of it, but what I'm really doing is putting it into that series. Okay, so that's nice. And then what am I gonna do over here? 
Well, I'd like to take this n minus one and then cancel this n minus two factorial down to n plus two times n factorial. So something like that. But now we can start recognizing some things. Well, this one is obviously just gonna be brought down as one, but look at this. We've got an n plus one in the denominator and we also have an n plus one as our exponent. Well, it looks like we've taken an antiderivative. So I make, maybe could write this as a symbolic antiderivative as the integral from zero to x of this sum where, well, I take the derivative because of the fundamental theorem of calculus. If I add in an integral, I need to also add in a derivative. They annihilate each other. So I've got the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity. And now this is t of n over n factorial, and then it is t to the n. And now we could just check really quick that if you took this integral or this symbolic antiderivative, you would get exactly this thing that's above. And now something pretty similar is happening over here, except we've got this n plus two in the denominator and that n plus two as our exponent. Well, that means we've like taken the antiderivative where we had uh, t to the n plus one in there. So that looks something like this. So the antiderivative from zero to x of our sum as n goes from zero to infinity of t to the n over n factorial and then t to the n plus one. But I'm gonna put an n here and a t out here and just recognize that in the end that would be t to the n plus one. And then I've got dt here. But now let's look at what we've got inside of these antiderivatives. So this thing right here is exactly our exponential generating function, which we called t of x up there, but now the variable is t. So it's like t of t. And then this thing within the antiderivative here is almost that. It's exactly that multiplied by another variable t. So we've got that this is t times capital T of t. Okay. So let's maybe bring that up here, you know, realizing that those are still in antiderivatives and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so this is where we ended our last board. And this is a little bit awkward to work with. It's like an integral equation, but we can turn it into something that's more familiar, a differential equation if we take the derivative of this whole thing. So let's say that's what this magenta arrow is. It's taking the derivative. So that's gonna give us t prime of x equals, well, the derivative of one is zero, but then derivatives and antiderivatives cancel each other. That gives us t of x plus x times t of x, where we've used the fundamental theorem of calculus part two there. But now we've erased some information because this one is gone, but we can get it back with an initial condition. And we know that initial condition because t evaluated at zero, well, that just cancels out out all of the terms except for the, well, t of zero term. It's a little bit awkward there with our variable for our generating function versus our index, but I think that's okay. So t of zero is one. Okay, so now we've got what's called an initial value problem. Okay, so I think we could maybe like solve that on this board and then get to finding a closed form. So we would maybe write it like that, but notice very quickly, that's gonna give us t prime prime of x over t of x equals one plus x. And then we can take the antiderivative of both sides and that'll give us the log of t of x equals x squared over two plus x plus some constant. But now we can evaluate this at zero. So t of zero is one, the log of one is zero, but then these two terms zero out. Oh, but that means that constant is zero, so we can actually erase this constant, we don't need it. But now we can exponentiate both sides and we have a nice closed form for our exponential generating function. It's e to the x squared over two plus x. Okay, so let's take that and we'll unravel it a bit in order to build a nice closed form. So on the last board we got our exponential generating function was e to the x squared over 2 plus x. 
Now, the first step I'm gonna do is split this up into the product of two exponential functions. We'll have e to the x squared over two times e to the x. This is an easier way to expand it. And now I'm gonna recall the standard expansion for an exponential function and then do that to both of these. So let's see, that's gonna give us the sum as r goes from zero to infinity of, we'll have x to the 2r over, so this is gonna be two to the r times r factorial. Okay, nice. And then what about e to the x? Well, that's even simpler. So I've got the sum as s goes from zero to infinity of x to the s over s factorial. Okay. Now, notice that here we have even powers of x, and here we have even and odd powers of x. So, I think maybe the easiest way to continue from here is to break this term right here into even and odd powers of x, and only focus on the even ones. And then later, maybe for a homework exercise, you could focus on the odd ones. So let's notice this breaks into some pieces. So this will break into the even part, which is the sum as s goes from zero to infinity of x to the two s over two s factorial. So I think those are pretty clearly the even parts. And then we'll have the sum of the odd parts, which will be the sum as s goes from zero to infinity of x to the two s plus one over 2s plus 1 factorial. And then let's see where we could go from there. So I'm gonna take this product given here and here and call that t even. So let's do that. So we have t even of x is equal to, well, that product. So I've got this sum as r goes from zero to infinity of x to the two r over two to the r times r factorial times this even part of the exponential function which I split off. So that's the sum as s goes from zero to infinity of x to the two s over two s factorial. And then maybe I'll write here that there's a similar thing for what I'll call t odd. And what do I mean by t even and t odd? Well, the, just the even powers of x from our exponential generating function versus the odd powers of x from our exponential generating function, which the t even will allow us to calculate the even telephone numbers, whereas t odd allows us to calculate the odd telephone numbers. Okay, so from here we can use Cauchy's product formula on these two series and get like a nice sort of closed-ish form. So this turns into the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the sum as k goes from zero to n of the kth term of this first one. So that'll be one over, let's see, two to the k times k factorial times the n minus kth term of this second one. So that'll be 2n minus 2k factorial. But now we do the same thing for the powers of x. It just turns out that those will always multiply to x to the 2n. So we have something like that. Okay, so now let's bring that up and then we're pretty much ready to write down our closed form. Okay, so finally we have this nice formula for what I call t even, which is the even part of the exponential generating function for the whole thing. So writing it out in terms of its definition, it's the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of t2n over 2n factorial x to the 2n. But in terms of all the calculations we do, it's this object. So notice that the coefficient of x to the 2n here is exactly equal to all of this stuff. Whereas the coefficient of x to the 2n here is all of this stuff. So now we get our closed form for t of 2n by equating those and solving for t of 2n. And that gives us this following like, you know, semi-closed form. I would call it a closed form. It's still in terms of a sum, but I think that's okay. So we have t of 2n is equal to the sum as k goes from zero to n of two times n factorial over 
2 to the k times k factorial times 2n minus 2k factorial. And in fact, if you're psyched, you can rewrite that in terms of some binomial coefficients. I'll let you do that on your own though. And like I said, maybe as a follow-up question, you could finish the other calculation to find out what t of, well, 2n plus 1 is. Maybe post in the comments to see what you got. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.